as we all know that yeah, air pollution yeah, uh, is one of the leading environmental cause for cancer. Yeah, uh, this message is come from the WHO in 2013, yeah, seven years ago. And uh, we, have, we also have, uh, according to the latest figure from uh, the WHO in 2018, more than 95% of Earth's, Earth's uh, populations, yeah, they breathe dangerous pollutant. Uh, and uh, also air pollution is involved in uh, the deaths of around 7 million people every year. Yeah. Uh, so the majority of the, the death taking place in poor countries. And uh, 9 out of 10 people are breathing air that containing dangerous level of pollutants uh, such as VOCs or nitric oxide, etc. And the annual death from the poor air have increased by 20% since 1990. Yeah. So uh, these figures uh, told me that, told us that uh, we need to uh, pay more attention and concern about the air pollution. And uh, for the air pollu pollution, yeah, we, we have uh, indoor and outdoor air pollutants. And this slide shows you those are uh, outdoor air pollutants such as uh, sulfur dioxide, nitric oxide, VOC, etc., and also the PM, the particulate, particulate matters. And uh, our research group uh, mainly focus on uh, the nit nitrogen oxides, yeah, how to degrade or remove the nitric oxides using some new materials. Uh, yeah, the abatement of nitric oxide. Yeah, why we choose nitric oxide? Yeah because uh, the atmospheric nitric, nitrogen oxides uh, concentration uh, have greatly increased in the past decades. Uh, it will cause damage to human tissue and also the environmental pollution, yeah, such as the photochemical smog. And uh, another problem is the ozone, because ozone is created when nitrogen oxides, the NOx, yeah, we add with another air pollutants in the atmosphere, that is the VOC. In the presence of light, that means we have the UV light. Yeah, uh, there's a chemical reactions and then form the ozone, uh, especially in the uh, high temperature. Yeah. Uh, for example, in China, yeah, it has a new air pollution crisis. Yeah, for the ozone. Yeah, each year ozone pollution uh, pollution is estimated to cause. Uh, 70,000 uh, death, pre mature death in China. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you can see from uh, this figure, yeah, it's from Greenpeace in 2018. Yeah. yeah, you can see that, yeah, the ozone concentration, especially in summer, yeah, rise from 2014 and has a peak to 2018. So uh, China has made impressive uh, strive in cutting these uh, sulfur oxides and also ozone and nitric oxides. And uh, photocatalysis, or we call photocatalytic oxidation, is one of the best known approach yeah, to decompose the NOx, the nitrogen oxide, yeah, that can be happened at room temperature and ambient pressure. Uh, so how to tackle the problem of uh, NOx, yeah, using this photocatalysis. Uh, an economical and also environmental friendly atmospheric nitrogen removal techniques, yeah, we would like to find any such yeah, technique yeah, that we can treat or we can remove the NOx under the ambient condition. Uh, the traditional method for the NOx uh, removal, yeah, mainly include the selective uh, catalytic reduction or wet absorption, etc., or selective catalytic oxidation. However, these methods are uh, only applicable to uh, the factory yeah, air ducts and uh, other settings with only high concentration of NOx and high temperatures. It's not suitable for the ambient condition. And these methods also uh, can be used to process NOx. Uh, from the sources. However, uh, the processing uh, efficiency of these methods is below that. That means we cannot treat it at 100%. And still a large amount of NOx yeah, tend to uh, permeate uh, the air. If people are exposed to this low concentration of NOx for a long period of time, 
Yeah, they can also easily develop different kinds of health disease, health problems as, such as lung cancer. Uh, so this, it is very important that well, even in the low for the low concentration of NOx, yeah, we also need to find some method to remove them or to degrade them. And when we talk about NOx, it's uh, mainly the NO and nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide because they account for 95% of NOx emitted in the air. Uh, the photo catalysis, uh, actually, so we can refer to uh, another other terms that is called artificial photosynthesis. Yeah. What is artificial photosynthesis means? Yeah, we know that the natural photosynthesis, yeah, they live under the sunlight, yeah, can have some chemical reaction to convert the water and CO2 into oxygen and uh, so, uh, uh, the, the, the glucose. If we can mimic this photosynthesis reactions, yeah, we call it artificial photosynthesis, using some new material. If this material under the sunlight or under the light, visible or radio wave light, uh, we can have some, uh, maybe the electron transfer to activate some like, uh, re uh, reduction or oxidation yeah, to, for example, to remove the air pollutants. Yeah, it is a very a promising approach and solution. Uh, actually, nowadays, uh, many scientists try to use this uh, artificial photosynthesis uh, to, uh, for example, have the water sweeting to produce hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen, and also to reduce carbon dioxide. And also, uh, 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 my research group also under this uh, mineralization of environmental pollutants, that means to degrade or to remove uh, some environmental pollutants using some photocatalyst uh, you may all you may know that uh, the photocatalyst, the most famous photocatalyst, yeah, is the titanium dioxide. Yeah, many uh, scientists use it before. Yeah, it is uh, the first report is from in the Nature, the journals in 1972, uh, from a Japanese uh, scientist, and uh, and we can see the the history and the trend that. Uh, most scientists uh, try to have different approach to increase the efficiency, such as a desensitized uh, approach yeah, to make it uh, have uh, that the, the material can be uh, activated under visible light, and also try to drop uh, different atoms, such as a non-metal or metal, and also uh, to create some high active site and also uh, another new approach that we call black TiO2 and uh, some uh, researchers also try to make some porous structure or nano structure yeah, in the uh, TiO2, titanium dioxide or photocatalyst in order to increase their efficiency. Yeah. Uh, this focal catalyst actually they can, yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, can degrade those pollutants such as to degrade the organic pollutants. And they ha also have other uh, functions. For example, they can have under the, the visible light or UV light, they can have, have self-killing properties. Yeah, for example, have a super hydrophilic surface and it can also kill the bacteria yeah, to, to destroy the bacteria cell. Uh, so my research group, uh, the main uh, research interest is uh, to modify uh, the photocatalyst in order to overcome uh, their technical deficiency and also to improve yeah, their performance. Uh, we have different approach, for example, to try to increase the surface area uh, by engineering some nano or mesoporous structure uh, using different uh, synthetic approach and also try to um, increase or modify the optical and chemical nature so that they can, uh, 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 for example, to absorb visible light instead of UV light to make them more energy efficient and also to couple with other uh, technologies such as uh, nanotechnology. Uh, these are uh, those uh, research that we try to uh, have some nano material or nano photocatalysis yeah, to 
um, degrade those environmental pollutants. Yeah. Uh, besides the titanium dioxide, in the past few uh, years, uh, our research group uh, also tried to uh, study another new photocatalyst. It called graphitic carbonitride. It's a polymer. Yeah. It is a uh, 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 very responsive to the visible light spectrum uh, with a high chemical stability, uh, suitable bank structure, and also cheap and sustainable. So we think that it is uh, another good choice. Yeah. Uh, beside, uh, compared to the titanium dioxide. So our research group uh, tried to uh, synthesize this uh, graphitic carbon nitride and using different uh, modifications. For example, this paper, uh, we published it in 2015 in order to uh, uh, make it uh, with some graphene light structure. And we found that uh, this graphene light structure, uh, carbon nitride, can have a higher uh, activity to remove the nitric oxides. Yeah, uh, another uh, study yeah, from our research group uh, is yeah, also uh, on the photocatalyst uh, carbon nitride uh, by adding uh, this uh, we call a TAP, a 246 a TAP, these chemicals uh, using the copolymerization approach yeah, to narrow the band gap to enhance the photocatalyst yeah, with a new structure. Yeah, you roll it up yeah, like this. And uh, we found that, yeah, in this figure, you can see that uh, the nitrogen monoxide concentration, yeah, when we switch on the light, the visible light, yeah, because this carbon nitride is a visible light different photocatalyst. Uh, this, uh, when we uh, couple it with 1% of this TAP in our synthesis, uh, we found that the efficiency, yeah, compared to the pure carbon nitride, that have an increased efficiency in removal of nitric oxides. Yeah. Here's uh, those uh, characterization. Yeah, maybe I don't uh, spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. yeah another approach, yeah, we try to uh, couple yeah, the carbon nitride with the wood tile titanium dioxide. Yeah. yeah. And the carbon nitride is a quantum dot. Uh, the, here is the mechanism. Yeah, we we couple it, uh, couple the carbon nitride with the uh, wood tile titanium dioxide because we want to make a set schemes, yeah, and have some uh, hydro junctions in order to uh, reduce the recombination of the photo generated electron and holes so that it can have a higher efficiency in the removal, yeah, of uh of the, the nitric oxides, yeah, you can find that yeah, those are S, the sample uh, with the S, started with S, yeah, is those uh, that we couple with the titanium dioxide, yeah, compared to the pure TiO2 or pure carbon nitride, the efficiency, yeah, the removal efficiency, yeah, is much higher. Uh, yeah, here is uh, the, uh, the the experimental setup that we use yeah, to remove uh, the NOx. Yeah, we put the sample under uh, the, the, the light, uh, visible light, uh, visible LED light, and we have a continuous flow of NOx yeah, from the standard gas. And then when it, the standard gas uh, nitric oxide, the known sample nitric oxide uh, flow into the reactor. We know the known concentration at the inlet, and then we monitor at the outlet. After the photocatalyst, yeah, we move those uh, NOx or degrade the NOx inside the reactor. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, the experimental setup. Yeah, we call it a continuous flow NOx removal tax. Uh, but there are still a lot of challenge that we need to. Uh, tackle or to face yeah, in the removal of NOx. Uh, for example, uh, we would like to develop high selective photocatalysts to uh, avoid the secondary pollutants and also catalysts the poisoning during the removal of NOx. Yeah. Uh, 
the traditional method of uh, nitrogen oxides, you know, removal uh, suffer from uh, the problem of low efficiency and also the deactivation of the catalyst because they may create a secondary pollution. And these are uh, secondary pollution uh, pollutants. Yeah, is uh, ineffective in converting the NOx yeah, to environmental friendly from nitrogen. Uh, for the conventional TiO2 based photocatalyst, yeah, mainly oxidize the NO yeah, to NO2 and also nitrate. Uh, but the NO2, the nitrogen dioxide, is a secondary form of pollution uh, uh, with greater uh, toxicity yeah, compared to the NO. Yeah. So that's why we don't want to uh, oxidize the NO to become another more toxic air pollutants. And also uh, nitrates, uh, the nitrate species, yeah, uh, do not uh, simultaneously desorb and also occupy the active site of the catalyst and it will lead to uh, the deactivation yeah, of the catalyst. So these two unfavorable factors yeah, will hinder or hamper the practical application of uh, using this photocatalyst, a photocatalytic technology yeah, to remove the NOx uh, and also compared to the photo oxidation, yeah, we would like to see whether if we can have some new approach to make it uh, have some selective selectivity for the NOx to generate N2 yeah, through the photocatalytic reduction, yeah, not the oxidation, although we know that it is more difficult. Yeah. Uh, Many study yeah, of the survey structure yeah, on the photocatalyst uh, in air uh, is still rare. Yeah. Uh, we know that the survey structure, yeah, uh, they may have different atom uh, termination and also surface energy. So uh, uh, the catalyst survey structure will be an important factor to order the products yeah, of photocatalytic as uh, gaseous air uh, pollutants removal, yeah, such as the NOx. Yeah. And uh, some study also shown that the chemisorption uh, mode of the gas molecules on the surface of the catalyst can control either the reaction path or the reaction product. Yeah. In general, the chemisorption, of, uh, the chemisorption mode of gas molecule on the catalytic material, uh, material it depends on its surface structure. It means the surface vacancy. So uh, that's why uh, we are very interested in yeah, if we can generate some surface vacancy yeah, on the photocatalyst structure, yeah, will it be happen to have some new reaction pathway or selectivity or new photocatalytic mechanism? We would like to find out their relationships. Uh, there are some research, yeah, they also try to study the surface vacancy on the graphitic carbon nitride photocatalyst. Yeah. For example, uh, some scientists, they try to yeah, uh, make some surface oxygen vacancy yeah, in the titanium dioxide and that the titanium free plus defects are not conductive to the enhancement of photocatalyst activity and after the absorption of photocatalyst. Another study, yeah, they try to make some nitrogen vacancy in the uh, graphitic carbon nitride yeah, have also been extensively investigated and applied in the photocatalyst. Yeah. So uh, we, in the past two years, uh, we also uh, studied this uh, uh, surface vacancy yeah, on the graphitic carbon nitride. We try to make some carbon vacancy yeah, on the surface of this photocatalyst on the carbon nitride nano sheets. And also we try to investigate their performance yeah, with this uh, carbon vacancy yeah, through the oxidation in CO2 yeah, for NOx removal under the visible light irradiation. And we found that these carbon vacancies yeah, so uh, enhances photocatalytic uh, oxidation yeah, for NO and NO2. Uh, here are some uh, characteristics with uh, Characterization results, uh, there's a ESR and also the XPS. Uh, we use this characterization result to confirm that yeah, there's existence of the carbon vacancy.
and also uh, we also have uh, other uh, analysis uh, such as uh, uh, the UV visible absorption, yeah, and also some calculations, theoretical calculation, and also the XPS. Uh, I, I don't spend a lot of time here, I uh, try to skip it. Um, uh, and uh, from the removal uh, of NOx using this uh, graphitic carbon nitride with carbon vacancy, we can find that yeah, the B, yeah, the, the, red, uh, the red line yeah, compared to the blue, uh, black uh, line, uh, the removal yeah, of the NOx yeah, increase a lot. Uh, and also uh, it enhances separation and also the transfer of the photogenic charge carriers and also favor strong chemisorption of NOx. Yeah. According to our characterization results. Uh, besides the carbon nitride, yeah, we, it, we also synthesize other photocatalysts. Uh, and from this uh, tin oxide, zinc tin oxide uh, composite, that can be activated by visible light. Uh, we found that yeah, well, during the synthesis, during the synthesis, and uh, we found that yeah, we can create some uh, uh, thin vacancy uh, during the uh, preparation of this uh, composite. And this thin, uh, thin vacancy yeah, can trigger the visible light photocatalytic activities. And here is the, the preparation that yeah, we use a hypo, hydrothermal approach yeah, to prepare the sample. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can show that compared to the pure sample, yeah, this is in the red line. Yeah. And the other sample with different uh, uh, preparation uh, conditions yeah, and show enhanced activity under visible light. And we also try to repeat uh, the activity with different cycle yeah, to study their stability. And uh, another approach, yeah, as I mentioned before, yeah, compared to the dose and oxidation of NOx, we would like to see whether the carbon vacancy can uh, have the favor uh, the oxidation and favor the uh, reduction instead of the oxidation of uh, nitrogen oxides. And uh, we found that yeah, this carbon vacancy yeah, on the graphitic carbon nitride nano sheet exhibit a higher conversion efficiency and conversion rate of NO yeah, compared to the pure or the bulk graph uh, carbon nitride. And uh, this carbon vacancy defects yeah, can act as the electronic traps to localize the photogenerated electrons while well, also serving as an absorption site for the NO through the interface uh, bonding of the, this uh, carbon vacancy, oxygen and nitrogen bonding. And the localization of both the photogenerated electron and NO molecule to the same site lead to uh, direct electron transfer from the vacancy defect to NO, resulting in the reduction of NO to N2 and O2. That means we can uh, observe some NO reduction, yeah. Although we know that it still have oxidation, but it seems that those carbon vacancy can make the NO reduction happen. Yeah. So conclusion, yeah, the surface defects, yeah, uh, is a very important effect on the reduction activity of the photocatalyst. And also the surface defects at the structure uh, also affect the absorption of photocatalyst. That means that the selectivity of an NO removal reaction yeah, can be changed or can be affected. And the regulations of the surface defects on the photocatalyst yeah, may help to realize the conversion from NO to N2 and lead to the new roots towards the design of high, highly selective photocatalyst. So uh, our future uh, work or future study, yeah, we try to further prove our proposed idea that is try to tailor make some more uh, surface defect structure yeah, to regulate the photocatalytic reaction pathway with high uh, sensitivity in photo reduction of the harmful NOx to environmental friendly N2 gas. This is uh, um, 
you know, future uh, or ongoing uh, research work. So at last, I would like to acknowledge uh, our research collaborators in Hong Kong and in mainland China, and also the funding agency in Hong Kong. Yeah.